Welcome to uh, another Mittler Monday. Uh, we're going to go over some things uh, from time to time that uh, you've probably heard before, but, uh, and are presented by somebody else. Uh, we all tend to say the same things, uh, but uh, it has different meanings coming from different people. So uh, having heard something and mastering something are two totally different things. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about gesture because uh, uh, my approach is, is a little bit unusual. Other people do it, I, I'm sure, but um, uh, it's not the uh, West Coast uh, Art Center uh, animated type of construction, even though it is uh, uh, a constructive method of sorts. Um, a lot of people treat this as, uh, as a separate issues, that you, you build the construction, uh, then you light it, then you turn it into a uh, a more finished, uh, rendered, uh, life-like looking work. Uh, my method kind of combines a lot of these, but instead of starting with the idea of limbs or rivers uh, uh, with the arms flowing and the legs flowing, uh, I start with the, the, the simpler concept of uh, point to point. In other words, I'm interested in the location the direction, I'm interested in the starting point and the end point. Uh, and I'll draw this so that you can see what I'm talking about. So rather than starting with ovals, I start with a straight line rhythm. Uh, this represents roughly the rib cage and, and the pelvis. Uh, I divide that in half for the pelvis. Uh, I find the angle for the rib cage and I leave myself a little point up here at the top. Now, I, I start with the trunk uh, or pelvis. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice with uh, Bridgman's constructive anatomy is that he starts with uh, hands, which is kind of strange, but uh, uh, I'm just gonna put these in uh, so we have it's just a starting point. Uh, I don't stop where I think the legs are gonna stop or where the arms are gonna stop, but I like to build this, I want to know what this torso is doing. Uh, I go halfway down this system here uh, to establish this arc. It gives me a, a nicer arc, but it also does another thing. It, it, it shows me where my navel is going to be, because my navel is right at that point. Uh, so uh, I then want to establish my rotation and orientation. So this would be my sternum. Uh, I like the uh, seventh, eighth, nine, tenth rib. In other words, six, seven, eight, nine, and the tenth rib on that side. Uh, you know, these, these construction lines uh, don't need to stay there. Uh, I like to con uh, connect the dots here. You know, it's uh, interesting when I was uh, a young child, people of my age, our parents, to keep us busy, uh, had us connecting the dots uh, on these little, uh, yeah, they had these little booklets with connect the dot games in them, and that's what we did to uh, entertain ourselves on long trips. Uh, it's interesting that 70 years later I'm still connecting dots, so uh, it must have uh, made a good impression on me. So uh, one of the things that uh, you think about here is that when legs cross, that is a point of reference. It's usually a, where a knee is going to be. Uh, I, I drop back here to the end of the knee. Now you don't worry too much about proportions. I use a system called the CSI or cranial sternal index where I know the measurements of these things. You know, it's like three to the knee and three, three more to the floor. So my foot's going to be somewhere down here. I'm using uh, this. Uh, kick back here to this back side just so that I'm, I have a, a nice flow to that. I also can use this pneumatic device to place this foot on the ground. So uh, you, you've got a nice start to this figure. Now it gets very complex very quick. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to illustrate one point here. We don't wait until we build something to start making it come to life necessarily. So this, this represents my adductor group, and this over here represents my quads coming around. 
I can find my uh, fibula by doing that. And we don't have to wait uh, until uh, any certain point to start simplifying this because what you're after is an educated contour. So you can start really building this. I always put this arc, uh, the uh, iliac uh, crest in there uh, to get it started, but you know where your trochanter is going to be. Uh, this is going to come back. You feel that going back down under. Now, uh, I will do a whole lecture on Y and T intersects, but uh, uh, as you can see, this doesn't take forever to start getting into uh, it looking like a figure. Now, these always like um, have a change of direction at uh, your joints and I concentrate as you as you can see on what happens at joints and rather than the more usual uh, situation where they would they would do a leg that would be just this kind of a situation to get started uh, and then add bumps to that uh, I'm doing a much uh, more structured uh, straight line method, I should say. Um, you know, you can add your external obliques. I'm, I'm really working from the, the concept of a skeletal structure uh, and then adding my information to that. My navel is going to be in there somewhere. Uh, you always visualize these, these areas going through the figure. Uh, you don't have to necessarily draw everything. This, this is a Y intersection. Uh, this one down here becomes a T intersection. So a Y intersection, you're, you're doing it away from the viewer. A T intersection, you're doing it toward the viewer. So you're shading it. You're shading in front of it or behind it, depending on whether it's a Y or a T. Now, this is a, a little area here where you have the sternum. Uh, this is the same length as that. This is foreshortened because it's moving away from us. But you can kind of visualize these as the hands on a clock and work your way around that. Uh, and here you can, if you want, you can have this, this, this foot up on tiptoes, uh, however you want to, how you want to do it. Uh, obviously you have a a little bit more form on that side of that knee. Uh, but you can see that you build this figure as you go. Uh, it's important to understand uh, that you have this cape. And once again, I'm not stopping where I think this is going to stop. I'm just finding this point. Uh, I, I treat the end of the bone uh, the inside condyle, which is a major landmark, and the outside condyle, which has a lot of flesh draped over it. Uh, but I, I treat them, uh, I guess it's easier to say that we're looking at a skeletal structure and we know it has a something on one end and it has something on the other end. In this case, the condyles, in that case, it's got a spherical thing that fits into, the, into your armpit. So uh, if, uh, if I'm not, don't have these bones crossed, which is a whole lecture on its own, but uh, I can find where my hand is. Now this is an interesting arc here because uh, we need uh, our hands to uh, uh, perform certain bodily functions and so we know how long our wrist is. It's usually, usually in somewhere around the symphysis pubis, so, th so that arc will kind of find that wrist. Now we can find this division here of these two bones with, by doing something like that uh, and knowing that that cups in like that. So it's really a little hard to see in this deal. But what you're going to notice here, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's really throw this 
arm up in space. Once again, I'm not prejudging, but I know that if I have this head here, that this is going to be somewhere around this area. And then let's just bring this uh, back. Uh, and we can even throw this head back in space more if we want. We know that ear is going to be fitting there. We're going to have a nose up here. So we can build these uh, figures. Of course, this next one can come up in here a little bit more. And we can just build as we go. Uh, I like to drop this around uh, this uh, chest area uh, and carry it around on both sides just so that, that this is going to be feeling like a ground form, spherical form on a on a column. Uh, this this goes, you feel that muscle going into there. Uh, all of this stuff uh, comes down and around. And of course this goes up over the top there. We're feeling this uh, feeling this um, deltoid muscle, the pectoral muscles, the deltoid muscle going in there. Now, this is not erasing, it's kind of subtracting. Uh, these construction areas or construction lines end up uh, a lot of times being in areas that uh, we're going to shade anyway. Uh, you know, here you have this uh, sartorius muscle pulling down there. Uh, you have your uh, tensor muscle pulling over the side. So that kind of gives you an idea of how to build these figures uh, as you go without, uh, my navel's a little low there, um, without getting into uh, uh, separating them in terms of building the construction, you know, Get, doing the gesture, building the construction, and then uh, doing the rendering. I mean, it's kind of, it's the whole process evolves more uh, organically, you know, so that's the way that I approach it, and uh, hopefully it's helpful to you all as well. And we'll see you again on our future Monday. And I guess we're going to set a time frame for this and at the same time every Monday so that we're like Mr. Pierre. Bonjour.